Motor racing in its purest form. Real cars on real roads, real fast. It's the Michelin Canadian Rally Championship on TSN. From Pointe Peak in the Charlevoix region, northeast of Quebec City, TSN presents the Michelin Rally Auto Charlevoix. Hello again, everyone. Vic Rutter along with analyst Paul Chater. And the world-famous Manoir Richelieu in the Charlevoix Casino will once again play host to this 10th annual rally. And with only two races left to go in the season, all the top teams are here. Look, there's the Subaru's Tom McGear and the Latres with their Mopar Eagle Talon. Today's rally is presented by Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. Paul? Vic, the rally will consist of 14 special stages, ranging from the longest at about 25 kilometers, right down to this very short sprint on the asphalt of less than 1,000 meters, and it's right in front of the Manoir Richelieu. Now, this is Carl Merrill leading the championship, but it is close. We've had six different winners in the six rallies so far. And look at this. Just a bit too much horsepower for Carl here. This Ford Escort has 450 horsepower turbocharged engine, four-wheel drive, and a seven-speed transmission. Selçuk Karamanoglu, the former Turkish champion, now racing out of Maine. The winner of the Beta Chaleur, second in the Canadian Championship. Karamanoglu gets through the hairpin, fine. Coming up on the uh, finish control, very short stage. Over the railway tracks, 39 seconds, he'll take the early lead. Mary and Sandra Latre are regular top five finishers in their Eagles. They've led several times, but they have yet to win. Hold Overcooked it just a little, but he recovered quickly, got it back into first gear. No time to enjoy the view. It is pretty. Eve Barb and Bishop Lacroix, another team still looking for a win this year. He knows the roads around here very well. Let's have, oh, again, and he overcooked it through the hairpin. What is it about that corner? It almost seems like it's a little off camber, too. Once the rear gets loose, you can hardly hold on to it. It is, and the weight's all transferred to the front when they're heavy braking going in there as well. The tail's very loose. Now, Barb finished ninth, just three seconds off the lead. Now, you assume that Merrill's Ford Cosworth is the most powerful car, but think again, because this is Bruno Breivik, over 500 horsepower. He had a little trouble getting it around, too, so I'm just steering through the turn, but the four-wheel drive pulled it through. The Audi Quattro, my goodness. Tom and Trish McGear, the Subaru. WRX. Now, this is what Trish McGear is looking at in the lower left hand side. That's the Terra Trip computer. In the center, the instructions, the tulip diagram she's seeing in her instruction book. And all the time she is looking at the computer and her room book, and she's talking to Tom McGear, telling him about the next uh, hazard on the road or which way the corners go. Now, this is that hairpin right. Remember, so many people losing it. Well done by Tom McGear. We're going to have a look at the instructions a little later on, but you can see they enter by the dot, they leave by the arrow, and that's what she's transmitting to Tom. You can see over the railroad tracks in the route book. Ten finish. And 100 meters to the finish. Across the finish line. And they finish one second slower than Karamanoglu. Jorge Descalis, Bruno Carré. They have the top production GT car on the He's adjusting the mileages now on the Terra Trip computer. The top two-wheel drive car, the only non-four-wheel drive in the top ten, and it's the VW GTI, Jonathan Nichols and John Belfler. Belfler, one of the top veteran co-drivers in all of Canadian rally, and Nichols, a veteran ice racer. And he tied with McGear in 40 seconds. In Montreal, John Sebastian Besler showed his racing background. A 39-second run down the hill. That put him into a tie for the lead. Ooh, he locks them up. And that's the way to do it. <laughs> little left foot break, maybe a tug on the handbrake, and he got it through. Sylvain Erickson, Gilno won the Bighorn Rally in Alberta in May. They are currently second in the championship, and they are a good bet to do well here. Erickson used to have a reputation as a crasher, but he's really tidied up his driving. He actually led the Canadian championship at one point this season, and we should watch him closely today. The concentrated look of Jean-Marc Alcaraz, best known for a huge crash he had here in this rally two years ago. 
And of course, it was right in front of our TSN cameras, and he's back in a Mazda 323 GTX. Conservatively through the hairpin, he's uh, saving the car and his tires. BMW 325, Ivan Joyal and Raymond Cadieu. Now, two-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive. They're at a disadvantage against the uh, four-wheel drive vehicles. Don't see too many BMWs rallied. Coming into the hairpin, whoa, locks up the right front. Ooh, a little left foot brake lock. Both of them up that time, and managed to get it through the corner. From Funnel Peak, teams drove very sedately to uh, Claremont for another tarmac run through the streets of town. Rallying, as you'll see, very popular here. But the driving on pavement is altogether different for some of these drivers. Uh, it's very difficult. You have to take a racing line through the turns. You can't be as wild with the car sliding and hanging the tail out in the turns. Pavement requires very tidy driving. Carl Merrill in this high-powered little purple bomb called a Ford Escort. And he's got a seven-speed gearbox. Look at him working through this gearbox. He is really flying. 220 kilometers an hour for Carl Merrill. There's seventh. And if he had eighth, he'd probably put him there, too. Carl's being very tidy, treating this with a racing line, but you have to remember that they've never seen these roads before, so they are, in essence, driving blind, and they're on racing tires, which are absolutely cold, and there's an example, but that's the finish control Can right there on the corner. Can you imagine that? He puts it sideways through the finish line, finished in 55 seconds, an average speed of 114 kilometers per hour. Now, Selchuk, Karamanik, Luke, Jorgi Bittner, they were in a three-way tie for first place after the opening stage. Now, you see, he's telling Karamanik, Luke, easy coming into the turn. On the brakes, ooh, a little hop. He's tightening up his seatbelt. Yeah, interesting. Co-driver, though, rarely lifts his eyes from the roof, does he? Uh, only to look at the computer, really, and it's probably best that he not see what's going out <laughs> on outside the windshield. <laughs> what he doesn't know won't scare him. Exactly. And to the finish line and through in a time of 55 seconds. And so he ties Carl Merrill. This is Eve Barb. We'll see a great variance in technique when they're running on the pavement. Some of the rally drivers have difficulty adjusting to the pavement. They also have difficulty choosing the right kind of tires to run on this. Because it's so cold, oh, there's a big slide over the crest of the hill. The car got unweighted. He's running on racing tires that just can't get the heat in them today. If he's been running on perhaps on a high performance uh, street tire, uh, that may not have happened. Now let's watch him through the S's. Now remember, he does not know which way the road goes here. Not clipping the apex as tightly like you would see a road racing driver do. And despite the fact there's a co-driver telling you what to expect, I would think that as a driver you're still surprised, huh? Well, the co-drivers are only warning about hazards. They're not telling the driver, for example, whoa, what's over the crest whoa, of this hill. Whoa, whoa. And he overcooked it again. But you could even sense that yet. The road almost threw, the road wanted to go to the left, the back end was going to the right, and then he started a fishtail and lost it all together. So two big spins for Eve Barr. Now we're back with Tom and Trish McGear in their Subaru. Now let's have a look at what uh, Trish is looking at. In addition to the computer, she's got her route instructions. They're called tulip diagrams because they were invented in the tulip rally in uh, the Netherlands. The first instruction is the distance from the start of the stage. The second number is the distance from the previous instruction so that she can adjust the computer as they go along to adjust uh, for wheel spin and everything else like this as he's sliding through a turn. That was very well done. Caution, blind left, right over crest. There's the right over the crest. 20, blind left, right over crest. She's not looking out the windshield. She's watching the root book and the computer. And that's where you right. barb spun it, remember? Finish. 
T right, finish. And through. Well done for Tom and Trish McGear. Thank you. Now at the finish line, she takes her root card, hands it in. They post the time on it, and they'll add it up at the end. Good run here by Jean Sebastian and Jacques Besner as they tie for second with Merrill and Carolina Glue. Sylvan Erickson still running well. He moves into third place. Here's Bruno Kryback in his rather ancient Audi. Roger Royer and Pauline Thomas. Oh. Ivan Joyal and Raymond Cadieu in their BMW. So after four stages, hey, Trish McGear must be doing something right. She has her husband in front by three seconds over Paramana Glue. You know, sometimes you get the feeling that these rally drivers, <laughs> they are not the princes of pavement. They are not the Tarzars. They definitely are not road scholars. If he is out, this will cost him the lead in the Canadian Championship. Stage 6, 18 kilometers, high speeds, run up a twisty logging road, and we're riding with Barry and Sandra Frey. Four-wheel drive, Eagle Talent. Now, Barry's a master at handling these high-speed stages. He commented before about how calm his hands are on the wheel. You watch the car, it slides through the turn, and it looks so stable, and his hands are really sawing away on the wheel. But he's got absolute control of it. You know, what amazes me is he's averaging over 110 kilometers per hour. Now, think about that. That's the speed you might travel on the major expressways of our country. And he's doing this on dirt on a road he doesn't know. Got to be very careful. Ooh, those ditches just about the comment. That's the problem. You can't cut the corners too tight. The ditches will trap the car. Boy, they trapped him for 11 minutes until Jorge Daskalos came by and pulled him out. The car, though, not damaged, just stuck. And you can see it's just sort of rocking now. It's caught on the undercarriage. Not even the four-wheel drive will help. Ivar Gilacroix. Great shot. set up for the turn a little. He didn't know how tight that corner was. He got on the brakes a little bit too hard, started the rally pendulum swinging to get it into the turn to unweight the suspension. He didn't really need to. It's a very fast stage with long, sweeping bends. Want to make sure the car's straight going over the bridge. <laughs> yeah, I guess you do. Tom McGear, co-driver, wife Trish, they were fastest on this stage six, covered the 18K in 10 minutes and one second. Sylvain Erickson. And he's going past uh, Jean Sebastian Besner, who slid off the road on that high speed turn. Besner will continue, but he's out of contention. 
And again, you, your hand position, it's that sort of nine and three position, maybe 10 and two a little higher. Uh, nine and three is fast. You don't want to lock your thumbs inside the steering wheel in case you uh, you two what happened to the Latrezzi. Hold on. Oh. And you hit a ditch or a huge rock, you get the hand the uh, wheel wrenched out of your hands. Erickson wound up three seconds behind McGear. Now a few kilometers further north, stage seven, eight. Snow already. And here's the view from Jean-Marc Alcaraz running in fifth place overall. And the top five are all Canadians right now. McGear, Erickson, Barb, Joyal, and Alcaraz. The saint Jerome stage is another classic of this Charlevoix rally. Thousands of people gather to watch near the finish. 6.7K. It starts on gravel, but the last kilometer which we're seeing here is on pavement, and it's almost entirely downhill. It puts tremendous strain on the brakes. Look at this. McGear locking them up going into the turn because he's running on dirt tires on this part of the, the stage. And they lead by 17 seconds. They've won six of the first eight stages. Look at the crowd. One of the crowd favorites, of course, Key Barr. How difficult is it on the tires? I mean, you start off on the dirt, you select the dirt tire, and then you come, you know, with the with the road section, as we look at Sylvan Erickson. He's won the other two stages of the eight so far. It is tough on the tires. You can see all the skid marks coming into this turn. A lot of the drivers are locking them up. Oh, that was close. Volunteer crowd control marshals do a great job, but some spectators refuse to not stand on the outside of a turn, and that guy near the telephone pole almost ended up on the hood of a BMW. It just a little, got it back on the road. Another lockup. Hold it, hold it. Now, stage nine would be the end of the road for three of the top Quebec teams. Al Carraz in his Mazda 323, he's charging. In fact, he's moved ahead of Joy Allen, is now in fourth position behind McGear, Erickson, and Barb. But this stage would really shake it up the running order here in Charlevoix. Now he's co-drivers yelling for a jump, and there are spectators on the hill. Not a great sign. Oh, boy, he hit hard. Got the kidney pads on. Look at this. Some of the techniques over the hill. Ooh, and he landed on both front wheels at the same time. You want to land like a cat, one wheel at a time, to redistribute the shock over all four wheels and to avoid the car doing that, bouncing. As Erickson, nicely done. He landed it very well. The best jump, though, has to go to Joel Goulet. Now watch the co-driver's head. Bounce. Good thing these cars don't have airbags, so they wouldn't be able to see where they're going. Besner, Erickson, Goulet all have to retire due to damage sustained on the jumps. And it would be also the last time we see Yvonne Joyal and his co-driver, Raymond Cadieu, because on the next special stage, they suffered a terrible crash. Paul, they flipped a couple of times, pop a bridge of Buckman into a creek, Medical attention there immediately. Thankfully, Yvonne Joel recovering. He has a fractured hip, but you don't see this very often. Rare. I can't remember the last time I saw anyone in a car injured in a rally. It's it's very rare, Vic. So the leaderboard after 10 stages, Karamanoglu, who was down as far as seventh, is now in fourth, but the leader by 47, McGear and McGear. Boy, they love their rallying here in the Charlevoix region. Some 5,000 people cheering on the stage they call La Pax. In the dwindling light now, and it is Laval's Eve Barb who came on to win this 14.27 kilometer special stage. And with Erickson out, Eve Barb is in second place. The lights are on. And it's altogether different at this time of night, isn't it? I mean, it's not complete it's not daylight it's not darkness it's kind of, it's sort of eerie it's the most difficult time to drive the light is flat you don't get the definition on the road that you need to see uh, it's better actually to be driving in total darkness with all the headlights on As a driver, as a co-driver, do you do the same things as you would in the daytime, or in fact, do you try and slow it down? Uh, 
a lot of drivers actually will go faster in the dark because they can't see what's on the edge of the road. It's not quite as intimidating to some. Now, problems for the McGears. They're in first place, but they've lost second and fourth gears. They still managed, though, to finish fifth on the stage, and they still managed to hold on to their lead. 47 seconds over Barb, who is running in second. But, I mean, if you got first and third, that must hurt you. So into the night they go in the Charlevoix. Michelin Rally Auto Charlevoix here on TSN. Subaru has been the dominant manufacturer of all on the world rally scene recently, so a lot of good things were expected when Subaru Canada imported this WRX Impreza for Tom and Trish McGear. Yeah, but as always with the first year, uh, 96 is a development year for the team. They've shown some great speed, but they've yet to win a rally in Canada so far. Just two 18-kilometer stages left. They had a two-minute lead, but it wouldn't last. Well, because Tara Maniglou and Bittner have battled back. They were in the lead, tied for it, then they fell back to seventh. They've been conservative now. Boy, he's flying. Won the final three stages. Other teams had problems. Tara Maniglou, the, the rally really came back to him. With only 20k left, their tactical approach paid off. McGear's racing clutch failed, leaving the Subaru stuck in neutral. Eve Barb just six seconds behind Karamanaglu. Great rally for this team. So they've now locked up the prestigious Coupe de Quebec, the provincial championship. And the final checkpoint, Karamanaglu wins his second rally of the season. The only repeat winner this year. Coming into view now, this is Eve Barb, second place, 51 seconds back, but as we say, won the Quebec Championship, the Coupe de Quebec. New York team of Bruno Krybrick, Jeff Becker, they finished third in that Audi Quattro. Great run for them, trouble free. The Ontario team, Pete Pollard, Keith Townsend, they finished remarkable fourth. Their VW, top production sport, two-wheel drive machine, and a timing mistake costs Jorge Dascalis fourth place. He finishes fifth, that's enough to give him the GT production championship and he loves Quebec. Quebec rallies are number one in my list because uh, the crowds are so great, they come in great numbers, they uh, seem very excited even though we're really uh, looking at just driving but you can see from the corner of my eye that they're, they're really cheering and uh, I really enjoy coming here. I think that's one of the main reasons why. So with one rally left, the Tall Pines in Peterborough, November 23rd, championship really comes down to Karamanoglu from Maine, Merrill from Vermont, Barry Latre has an outside chance. The Canadian Rally Championship on TSN is brought to you by Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. Now on behalf of Paul Chater and our entire crew, I'm Vic Crowder. Thanks for joining us. The very best in motor racing coverage is right here on TSN.